guys, what's up? This week, fried mac and cheese balls. I got these little macaronis right here. Should be good, should be pretty good to work with. Um, they're better than elbow macaroni. You can mold them around easier. I got some thick cut pepper bacon. I'm gonna fry up and blend into the macaroni and cheese. And two different breadings. I got just regular Italian breadcrumbs. Got some Cheetos I'm gonna blend up. So I'm doing them two different ways. The cheese we're using is medium cheddar and some smoked Gouda cheese. So let's see how this one goes. It's my first time making it, so check it out. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna fry up some bacon. I got that nice pepper bacon like I showed you before. Um, we're just gonna let it go for an extra long time. I like it um, extra well done just because when I crumble it up, you can see it right there. Um, just nice and crispy. It's gonna break up and just break up in the mac and cheese a little bit easier like that. Um, but like I said, we got our cheese right there. We got our smoked Gouda. Just gonna grate these up. Got our cheese. Got a big pot of water. We're gonna salt the water just like you would any other pasta. But with the macaroni, I'm gonna let it go a little bit longer because usually, you know, with regular pasta, I would do it al dente with a little bite to it. But um, we're just gonna let it go a little longer. But we got our roux, which is basically equal parts unsalted butter and some flour. I'm doing about five tablespoons of butter and close to the same amount of flour as you can see right there. You just wanna cook it for a little while and get the flour taste cooked out. And then you're gonna slowly work in the milk. You're looking about for equal parts of everything. So you got five tablespoons of the butter, the flour, then you got about four to five cups of milk and about four or five cups of cheese. Um, you're just gonna wait till it thickens up like that and season it with salt and pepper. And then we're gonna add our cheese in there. Make sure you kill the heat before you add the cheese because you don't want everything to burn up. And then do it to your consistency. However, you, however thickness you like it, uh, make it like that. But you can usually tell how a cheese sauce is. But we got our... Um, strained macaroni we're gonna pour the cheese sauce in there give it a good mix and if this if this was the only thing you made just a mac and cheese like this without the bacon or anything it would be awesome but we're gonna take it up a step further we're just gonna crunch up the bacon in there I could use a food processor or a blender but it's just easier like that I'm just gonna mix it in all right so after that this is what you want to do you want to throw it in the fridge so it gets kind of congealed and like like hardens up just so you can form the, the macaroni balls with it. So we're gonna leave it in the fridge, minimum hour, hour and a half. You could let it go overnight if you want, um, but we're gonna make the crust for the cheese balls. We got the Cheetos right there. Just give it a good blend and try not to make a mess. So we got that right there. We got our Italian breadcrumbs also, like I said. I'm throwing some eggs in a bowl just to kind of hold everything together the same way you would with fried chicken or anything else. Um, so we got our ugly macaroni on the side, all hard and cold, and we were using an ice cream scoop to make life easier, just to scoop everything out. And then the mistake I made at first, the first like four or five of these that I kind of rolled up, I kind of clumped them together and didn't roll them how I should. So they're kind of like funky looking clumpy balls, but we're just gonna give it a dip in the egg, and then put some breadcrumb on it. Kind of get these worked together. And so as you can see, this is what I should have been doing the whole time. I should have been rolling them like this, but I was afraid they were gonna fall apart. Um, but they held together pretty good, so that's how you wanna do it right there. So we got those all taken care of. Throw them back in the fridge just so they can get more solid again, because you don't want things falling apart. Um, I left these overnight and came back the next day. And we're gonna get the oil up to about, as close to 350 as possible, because if you go over 350 with these, they're gonna burn up pretty quick on you. So we're gonna give them a dip. Let these go for about three to five minutes. And, and again, keep your eye on these because you know you don't want some crusty, funky, burnt up balls. And then honestly, um, the flavor between the Cheetos and the Italian breadcrumbs, I couldn't really tell a difference. I thought the Cheetos tasted a little bit better. And if you're going for presentation, it just looks better with the Cheetos. So I'd probably just go with those over the breadcrumbs anyway, next time I do them. But that's what we got right there. We're just gonna give these a cut. I'm gonna show you guys what they look like on the inside. Cheesy goodness, got the bacon in there you can see. Looking nice. I think for the first time doing these, they came out pretty damn good. 
Um, but like I said, I'd probably just do them with the Cheetos next time I do them. You can taste the smokiness with the Gouda and a nice crunch on the outside. Bacon in there. And like I said, well, I don't know if I said, but next time I do this, I'd probably add more bacon. Um, it looked like a good amount, but I'd probably just add more in there just for a, a wow factor. People love bacon. But that's it, guys. Um, I'll see you on the next video. Not sure what I'm going to do. Kind of come up with these things on the fly, but have a good day. Peace out.